my name is Leo Kirch, and welcome to lecture number one of my lecture series entitled Leo's Lectures. Today's lecture is called Modern Program Music and Non-Abstract Representations in Musical Form. During today's lecture, we will examine my own composition, a violin duet, Opus 98. But first, some essential definitions. In music, the term theme refers to the melodic subject of a piece, and it is a synonym of melody. A motif is a short rhythmic or melodic segment. Therefore, a motif could be part of a theme, and we will later see that that is the case in my piece. But first, let's look at the general structure of the piece. As you can see on this board, the piece starts with the evil theme, and I would remind you that a theme is another way of saying melody. So the evil theme is followed by the good theme, and then the development section. Now the development is comprised of three important factors. Interaction between the two themes, meaning they mix together. Change of characteristics within the themes. And finally, a gradual merging of the themes, meaning they become less different over the course of the piece. So now that we have a general idea of how the piece works, I'll explain the two themes in a little more detail. As I mentioned before, the two themes of the piece represent both good and evil. However, the piece starts with the evil theme. The melody of the evil theme sounds like this. The accompaniment, that is to say what the other violin plays at the same time, sounds like this. Now let's listen to these two parts put together, and while we listen to it, I want everyone to think, what is the character of this music? So we can hear that this music is characterized by the rhythmic instability, the fast and accented notes, as well as the minor key. Now what this means is that the harmony, instead of sounding like this, sounds like this. So in general, this melody could be characterized as evil. Now let's look at the good theme. The melody of the good theme sounds like this. And this is accompanied by the second violin, which plays this. continues for the whole time. So this is what they sound like together, and again, what is the character? As opposed to the evil theme, the good theme is characterized by its stability, with the constant even accompaniment, and the sweet lyrical nature of the melody. In addition, this melody is in major, instead of minor. So while the harmony of the evil theme sounded like this, the harmony of the good theme sounds like this. So in general, these are all characteristics of good. So now that we've seen how different these two themes are, it's time to look at one very important aspect, and that is their similarities. That's right, while it may seem extremely unlikely, these two themes are in fact related. The way that they are related is by the motif, and I would remind you that a motif is a short rhythmic or melodic segment that makes up part of a theme. So if we look at the evil theme, the main motif is this. Now, when we go to the good theme, this motif appears again, however in a, in a slightly longer version. And then it repeats. So we can see from this that even though the two themes are very different, 
they actually do have an overlapping shared common ground. That's right. This means that there is a little bit of the good theme in the evil theme, and a little bit of the evil theme in the good theme. After the two themes are originally presented, they are developed by interacting with each other, by gradually becoming less different, and by changing their characteristics. These three factors portray the battle between good and evil by showing that good and evil are not always distinctly separated. First, the themes interact, meaning they mix together. So we see the melody of the evil theme, this one, played at the same time as the accompaniment from the good theme, which is this. So let's listen to this together. Following this interaction, the roles are inverted, meaning we hear the melody of the good theme this time, but the accompaniment, what the second violin plays, is now the evil theme. Now let's listen to that part together. The second development is that both themes are directly transcribed, however, one characteristic is changed, and that is the tonality. This is what I discussed before with the major and minor chords. So we see that the good theme, which was originally in a major key, is now in a minor key. And the accompaniment, which originally sounded like this, now sounds like this. So this development explores the possibility of the good theme containing within it the potential for evil. Now let's listen to this section in its entirety. Again, the same happens to the evil theme, however this time it goes from its original minor to a major key. So the evil theme, which originally sounded like this, now sounds like this. And while the accompaniment used to be this, it now sounds like this. Here we see the possibility that the evil theme could have a little bit of good in it. Now let's listen to this section, both parts put together. The final development, the merging of the themes, though it takes place gradually over the course of the piece, is best exemplified in the last segment of music. This is also the part of the piece that portrays the battle between good and evil. So the way I've shown this is that I've taken small parts of each theme and I switch back and forth rapidly between good and evil over a fast and constant second violin part. To show this, we'll listen to both parts together and I will voice over the music to say which theme is being played at any given moment. Evil theme. Good theme. Evil theme. Good theme. Evil theme.
both themes at one time. After this, the piece ends quickly, and the ending is intentionally ambiguous and confusing. I wrote this to prevent either good or evil having a clear victory in the end. After all, the battle between good and evil is a never-ending one. So now that we all have a pretty clear idea of what this piece is about, let's listen to it in its entirety.
Well, that's it for today's lecture. But join me next time when we'll discuss Baroque performance practice and the relationship between performance and compositional styles. Have a good day.